one of the best things about having your sheet music in digital file formats is the fact that you can carry your entire library with you wherever you go, especially if you're using a laptop or a tablet PC as your music reading device. The challenge then becomes organizing that library as it grows so that you can find any piece you need instantly. A lot of this is going to have to do with thinking through ahead of time what kind of music you play, what kind of information is most relevant for your music situation, and then creating file names that are going to be most helpful for you to find anything that you need about those pieces. As a collaborative pianist, I work primarily with classical music. So that means my library needs to have certain kinds of information for me to be able to find those pieces quickly. Things like the name of the composer, the form of the piece, the title, the instrumentation, and sometimes even I need to know the name of the publisher, the edition as we call it, uh, so I can compare between different versions depending on the preference of the person I'm working with. For pop musicians, for worship song leaders, uh, they're going to have different uh, criteria for their repertoire. So for pop musicians, they may just need the name of the song and the band that represents it. So those are some of the various permutations and parameters that you're going to want to think through as you create your music reader files. I'm going to give you a couple of examples to get you started, and then you can adapt them accordingly as you see how these different parameters work to be able to find any piece in your particular library quickly. For our first example, we're going to take a classical music piece. This is the Beethoven Sonata No. 2 for violin and piano, which I downloaded as a PDF file from one of my favorite sites, imslp.org. It's a public domain sheet music resource. So I'm just right now taking a look at it in a PDF reader. And here you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember where this file is located, the source file. Now to create the music reader version, I'm going to open up Music Convert. Okay, so now we have Music Convert open, but before we start working with any of the files, I just want to go over a couple of features and settings. Go to the top menu bar, you click on More, then you top, click on Settings. And I'm going to work on the Scan and Import section over here. I want to make sure my PDF import resolution is at least 300 dpi. So I've got my resolution the way I like it. Let's go ahead and click on New. And it's going to ask you where the file is located, whether you're going to be scanning it in directly into Music Reader, whether it's located as a single file, or if you have a whole bunch of them that you want to import all at once. Very useful if you've got, say, a CD full of PDFs that you want to convert and you don't want to do this one at a time. For right now I have a single piece, so we're just going to go for file. Let's go ahead and locate that. It's located in my downloads folder over here. And here it is, IMSLP. There we go. And it's this Beethoven Sonata. Okay. And in a little while it's going to go ahead and go through the conversion process. And as soon as it's done, we're going to go back and apply some catalog information to make it easier for me to find. Okay, so now Music Convert has finished converting the PDF into the Music Reader format. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Info to enter in the name of the piece as well as some catalog information. So go ahead and click on that I icon. As you can see, uh, by default, Music Reader will just apply the name of the file as the title. We don't want to use that, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And we're going to start off calling this the Beethoven Sonata number two in A major for violin and piano. Can just go ahead and take a quick look. This is opus two, opus 12, number two. Go ahead and apply that. Okay, so two in A major for violin and piano. Opus 12, number two. Now, one of the things I try to make sure that I do is I try to avoid any non-alphanumeric characters as much as possible. The period here shouldn't make a difference, but for instance, if I were to do something like this for violin and use this ampersand in the title, that ampersand is going to create problems for a music reader to recognize the files. So to uh, just make sure for the, to be absolutely safe, spell out everything, try to avoid plus symbols or you know, anything that is non-alphanumeric, okay? So that's my full long title. The reason, and I'll explain the reason for that in a little bit. Now for the composer, um, I'm going to add the last name, Beethoven. And Music Reader already has a, uh, a built-in database of 
a lot of uh, you know hundreds of composer names but if it's not in there uh, you can go ahead and add that in yourself as well okay there's an arranger field we don't need that a lyricist field but as you can see these are fields that may be important for pop musicians okay here this is just kind of an added des description if you need anything special for that the genre for this piece is this is called a sonata so go ahead and add that in the instruments are going to be used we're going to be using a violin I'm going to add the second instrument by clicking on this plus symbol and here I'll type in piano and there we go okay instrumentation again you can look at a variety of different um, if you, this is important for you if you need to have different arrangements and know what kind of thing this is you can add that information as well I don't use that uh, for the publisher I'm gonna write down bright cough and hurtle and it's already a lot of these publisher names are already here okay and that's useful for me as well okay and this is public domain all right very good and those are all the little title pieces of information that are going to be helpful for me to be able to find the piece quickly and as well to filter it as needed depending on the situation. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this all right and it's going to ask me to confirm this name and it's going to say where it's going to be saving it in. It's going to be saving it in the sheet music folder. Now by default if you haven't changed the settings when you installed music reader it will ask you if it's okay to create a sheet music folder within your documents folder. I advise you to say yes to that and not to create any additional folders. You basically what you want to do is keep all your music in one folder. Music Reader will take care of the organizing of the music for you with those catalog fields. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file and there we go. Okay. And if you want to take a look at this in Music Reader, we can go to more and then we can jump over to Music Reader to read this file and switch over switch programs, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. And let's confirm that we do indeed want to read this in Music Reader. It's going to open up the Music Reader program. I'm going to go ahead and view this a half page at a time. And there you go. Okay. So now we have this in our Music Reader file format. Let's go to the library just for fun. And here's what I mean by being able to find things quickly. If I wanted to find all the works by Beethoven in my library, I can do that by typing in the last name of the composer and hitting search, and there you go. These are all the pieces I have of Beethoven's in here. Okay. Now let's say I want to look for things with violin. I can search for that as well. And these are all the pieces that include a violin in, st in the instrument settings. Okay. Now. This is the best thing of all. I'm going to go ahead and clear this for now. Since I created this long title name, let's say I can't remember the opus number, but it's I remember it's Beethoven 2, I think it's for violin. I just have a couple of those name tags. Let's go ahead and search for this, see what we find. Look at that. Even with just partial information, here is my new sonata number 2. And if I kind of leave my mouse over there, it'll give me the additional information. Isn't that cool? Take a look at this. So go ahead and click on that, and that opens up that piece over here. Do one more thing just for fun. Let's say, uh, let's say concerto, violin, uh, Beethoven. So I have it all in different order. There we go. That's my Beethoven violin concerto instantly pulled up, and it'll open up that piece in just a second. So as you can see, by having all those different uh, tags added on to your music, you can use your library search function to find all of those pieces in a variety of formats and filter out what you need in, in a jiffy. By having the long title name like this, this enables me to uh, find my pieces very, very quickly. See that? Okay. And even if I don't know the full title, as long as I know portion of the title, I can find what I'm looking for very, very quickly that way. It's a fantastic feature, one of the best features of this program.